Today we are going to be talking about Renaissance, Renaissance art characteristics, art tied to the theory of humanism. Yesterday we learned about humanism. This is the movement away from focus on um, kind of more religious items and a more focus on to individual people or individual humans. When people think of the Renaissance, they most commonly start with art. And so we'll be starting with art, to, um, looking in the Renaissance, to talk about how the Renaissance influenced culture. Why do humans have a long history with art? In this first picture in the middle here, you can see some cave paintings. So we know that even in early humans, people had a fascination with art. I don't really know that there's one specific answer to this idea, but I think if I were to offer my own answer, I would say that people are interested in the connection that art has and the emotion that it helps them feel. So art helps create a connection between people. The rise of the art world comes in Italy. Um, you have looked at Italy when we were looking um, at ancient Rome, and we know that Italy kind of looks like a boot if you kind of tilt your head a little bit to the left. Um, by the end of the Middle Ages, the most important cultural cities were north of Rome in the cities of Florence, Milan, and Venice. What was going on in the south of the south, Naples and Sicily? Much of the power and influential art patronage was in the hand of wealthy families. The Medicis were in Florence, the Visconti and Sforza were in Milan. Venice was a hub for trade and commerce which made it powerful in the art world. We talked yesterday about how in the Renaissance, people have an opportunity to move up in society based on their abilities. One way that you could move up in society was your artistic ability. Now, someone might be coming from a lower class family and be a really talented artist, but not have the money to pay for the supplies or to put their paintings in galleries or whatever they need to pursue their art. So very wealthy families like the Medicis in Florence would be a patron for an artist and pay them in order to produce art. Why would people do this? Well, artists become very famous in the Renaissance, as we'll talk about in a little bit, and people wanted their names attached to these artists. Cities grew in wealth and independence as people moved to them from the countryside in large numbers. Why do you think there isn't such an influx of people coming into the city? Commerce brought money to the city-states, which began the desire to acquire art for status. Art becomes a status symbol. The more art you have, the more wealthy you must be. Why did art have a rebirth during the Renaissance? Thinking back on the definition of humanism that we talked about yesterday, why do you think humans had a need to revive their love for art? Continuing with the concept of humanism, what would you expect to see as some of the characteristics of Renaissance art based in this notion of thought? Well, if humanism is an influence on the individual, we can imagine that in Renaissance art, we'll see more focus on people as opposed to other items. Let's take a look at some pre-Renaissance and medieval art characteristics. What do you notice about these works? Something that you might notice is that the people just don't look like people actually look. <laughs> um, they, they look a little different than maybe we're used to seeing people represented. They kind of look stiff and it doesn't look natural the way that they are portrayed. And that is because a lot of art pre-Renaissance lacks perspective, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Characteristics of middle art, medieval art is that there is a focus on religious subjects. They lacked perspective, and so the paintings appear flat. If you look back at these pictures that we have, you'll see that there's not a lot of depth, especially in this picture to the far right. Um, the, the woman who is Mary um, in this painting, she has her head tilted, but there is, besides the, the, the one shadow on her chin, it's really difficult to see kind of her her shape and so it just looks flat on the page like it looks as if you would pull her off the page she would just be like a piece of paper like just flat and one dimensional um, there is little use of light and shadow and the artwork is not natural figures appear placed in the picture and the larger they are the more important they are so in this picture, you know, we see that people look a little bit larger than life. They look a little um, unnatural and they kind of look like mannequins. 
Um, they kind of look like someone have placed them and posed them in the picture. Children are painted to resemble small adults. So looking back at these pictures, as you looked at these, you're probably thinking to yourself, are you not going to address the fact that Mary is holding what appears to be a smaller man? Um, this baby that is actually in the picture, it's supposed to be a baby, um, is supposed to represent Jesus. Um, so Mary is the mother of Jesus. Um, and in pre-medieval art, um, children are small adults. <laughs> um, colors are more subdued than in later periods. In the earlier paintings, there is a heavy use of gold, and religious symbols are used frequently, biblical figures. Now, these represent um, Renaissance art. What do you notice about these works? Something that you can notice is there's a lot of more light, there's a lot of more shadows, people look more natural, there's more movement happening, there's more roundness. I mean, it's just way more realistic in these pictures. Um, I'd like you to go ahead and write down, you might want to um, pause um, this slide and on your notes, kind of write down this heading, Characteristics of Renaissance Art, and jot down these notes. We have the use of perspective, light, and shadow, proportion. Figures are drawn from nature and based on observation of the real world, which means they're objective. They might not all look the same. Colors are rich, warm, and glowing. They are anatomically correct, physiology, and emotion. There is a use of classical topics, stories depicted in paintings. Again, that rebirth is going back to ancient Roman Greece. The six main characteristics of Renaissance art. Um, on your notes, feel free to pause this, um, but on your notes, I'd like you to write down this heading, the six main characteristics of Renaissance art, and we're going to list out the six characteristics. The first is realism and expression. Um, people have emotion. You can see emotion in the their faces you can see emotion in the painting um there is a clear individual that is being portrayed here um this the woman who is mary again and we have jesus as the baby um, and now he looks more like a baby um, and not like a small man um they are more natural and they are more realistic second we have perspective um so instead of looking flat on the page um for those of us who aren't totally art minded, which would be myself included, if you look at this painting, this is the School of Athens, you can see that things in the middle are smaller and things that are on the outside are closest to us. So this is supposed to offer us some perspective. And in the right corner, you can see the perspective comes from the middle of the painting and then shoots out. Okay, so we feel like we're immersed. It's almost like if you've ever seen a 3D movie, things are kind of coming at you. Um, it's supposed to look a little bit more like that. And so it doesn't look as flat on the page like the um, Middle Ages art. The third is classicism. Um, so we have that Greco and Roman influence, ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Um, a secular idea. So not all art is based on religious um, icons. Uh, humanism. So if you look at this statue on the left, he has very distinct features. Okay, And there was a lot of care and a lot of effort that went into making this person look like an individual. Um, if you go, you know, kind of thinking back to the pre-Renaissance art, I mean, you're just a person, here's a face and here's some eyes. Okay, This person looks like they are unique. Um, there's individualism, they're freestanding. So they are an individual, which is one of the features of humanism. And there is symmetry and balance. So as we talked about earlier, when I talked about the Mary from um, pre-Renaissance art, her head was tilted, but like you only knew that because there was that one random shadow. But um, now in Renaissance art, we see a lot more of that balance. Number four is individualism. People are individuals. Um, they are, they have their own unique perspectives. For example, on the image on the right, you can see on the nose of this man, um, there is a little bit of a hook to it. And the woman on the left, she has more of a sloped nose. So not all noses look the same. They're unique to the individual. Number five is the geometrical arrangement of feature of figures. That symmetry and balance that we talked about, symmetry being if you fold it in, in half, it's the same on both sides. Um, take a look at this painting of Mary and her um, son, Jesus. What shape can you see in this picture? Well, you can probably see a couple of shapes. Um, one of the shapes that kind of come to mind um, when looking at this image is the triangle. 
Okay, the way that Mary and Jesus are set up is in a triangle. So it's very pleasing to the eye. It's very central. Um, it, it's nice to look at. And we additionally see some rectangles behind Mary and Jesus, which kind of center the whole idea. So if we folded this painting in half, it's not going to be like perfectly symmetrical, but you see kind of a balance on both sides. Um, and finally, we the artists have personalities. Um, Pre-Renaissance art, we don't really know a lot about the artists. Um, we know that they painted them, but we don't really know a lot about who they are. So in the Renaissance, we start to see artists as personalities. In the activity you're going to do today, you're going to take a look at um, two big personalities from this time period. Um, and we usually refer to them as the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, we have Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello. Okay. These are also all the names of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if you've ever seen those. Um, so in your activity today, you're going to do a little bit of research and do a little bit of learning about some of these artists. Thanks for watching.